The event tonight is being billed as the Great American Comeback. Joining me now, former Trump White House chief strategist Steve Bannon and host of the podcast War Room Pandemic. All right, you know, as John acknowledged, it's been a rough couple of months. You've had the pandemic, you've had the snap recession, you've had racial unrest in this country. How would you frame this election if you're the president, Steve? It looks like right now he's saying, I'm a man of action. I'm going to bring back the economy and take on China, while Biden is a sleepy, corrupt puppet who's going to destroy the economy. Look, you've, you've saw, you heard John Roberts talk about the enthusiasm people have for getting this campaign back underway. This is just not a rough patch we've gone through. I think it's one of the most turbulent times in modern American history, not just political history. And Donald Trump, look at the economy he built, particularly the strivers economy as a populist and economic nationalist. This was an economy that worked for the people at the lower end of the scale. And I think that's what President Trump showed through action, action, action. He built a terrific economy. And that's what it's going to take. You know, this rally is very important. But next week is President uh, Jesse, he goes down to the wall in Yuma to see the new wall that's being built down there. He also goes to Wisconsin to a shipyard where I think has an order of 10 Navy ships. Uh, this is where he's the best at creating jobs and bringing back jobs, bringing back the supply chain to the United States. And he's running against a globalist. So I think it couldn't be more well defined. I think you'll start to see it tonight on stage with President Trump as he lays it out, his vision for the next four years. But to me, it's very clear. It's a man of action versus someone like uh, Joe Biden, who's really been a legislator his entire life and, and, and a globalist. So as the president goes, as you said, to the border or goes to Wisconsin to look at um, a shipyard, if Joe Biden continues to use the excuse of the virus to not campaign and hide in his basement, how long do you think he can survive in that state? I don't think he can. Look, Joe Biden at the top of his game was not Einstein's cousin, right? He's obviously got <laughs> diminished capacity. Right. And he has to, I think, prove to people, he yeah. has to prove to people that he can handle con not just complex topics, but he's a man of action that can force his will on things. And I think, look, he's been in the witness protection program for a number of months. He's got this proof of life podcast that he does every so often. Every time he comes on social media, it's kind of a mini disaster. Uh, Joe Biden's going to have to go to the country and lay out a vision and a plan and then convince people he can execute upon it. He doesn't have a great track record. In fact, uh, if you remember what Bill Parcell said, you are what your record says you are. His record is being the senator from Wilmington, Delaware, really the mail drop or the post office box for globalist corporations. He supported them. He's been kind of their, their advocate for 40 years, he's going to have to run against that record and also convince people against Trump that he's got a plan of action. I just don't see it happening. I think President Trump, with the, on jobs, on law and order with necessary and needed reform, and also against China and this great geopolitical thing, as he handles a pandemic, which he's working with governors to open rapidly, smartly, and safely. When people see the difference between the order of Trump and kind of the chaos of Biden, I think it's going to be a pretty clear choice, and I think Biden's going to have a very tough time making this case to people. Oh, the order of Trump and the chaos of Biden. I didn't quite see it that way. So, Steve, you're saying, you know, obviously Joe Biden, not a man of ideas, never really had a fresh idea in his entire life. He's been a coattail candidate, got plucked out of nowhere to be the VP for Barack Obama, probably one of the luckiest politicians ever. Not a policy guy, poor instincts on foreign policy, yet... So you look at some of these polls, and, and Joe Biden's ahead in some places. Do you believe these polls, or do you just see that as more of a snapshot of where we are right now, several months to go? Look, President Trump was behind by these type of numbers in mid-August and 16. I think these polls are very ephemeral. I think with the American people, particularly today with a pandemic, this economic crisis driven by the pandemic, the financial crisis on top of that, all of it coming from Beijing, all of it driven by the Chinese Communist Party. You know, what people want is action. What they want is somebody, and this is why I say Trump really is order, because if you look at what everything Joe Biden talks about, the foreign policies he supported, the financial policies he supported, the economic policies about jobs and trade, that's led to the managed decline of the United States. The Democrats picked a globalist candidate in 16 and got beaten. And Hillary Clinton was far tougher and far smarter. 
than Joe Biden. Once again, they have selected a globalist candidate in an age of populism and economic nationalism. Joe Biden's going to have to defend that. That is the chaos that got, was brought to the United States, the managed decline by our political elites and our economic elites. President Trump has fought that from day one, and he's fighting it for the American people. And I think he's going to make a very serious case of why he is actually the candidate of order versus chaos. And I think it's going to be very powerful. And I think uh, Biden is going to have a tough time not just articulating it, but convincing the American people he's got the, the willpower to kind of push these changes through. Right, because he obviously can't articulate it. No one knows what he believes or what he thinks, or he doesn't even know what that is. He just reads whatever is put in front of him. He's never really been a leader ever. If you've ever seen him out front of anything, I can't think of one example where he's led the charge. So do I think that people are going to rally behind Joe Biden only in the sense that they want to take down Donald Trump? And you see that with the enthusiasm gap. The Trump supporters twice as enthusiastic to vote for Trump as Biden folks are to vote for Biden. But if you have all of this turmoil that we've been seeing, do you think that people are going to say, you know what, do we want to go back to normal or do we or do we want to keep the bull in the China shop? I think that's the question in November. Look, here, here's the reason. This was this was triggered by the Chinese Communist Party in this pandemic. Up until January, when President Trump signed the trade deal that he fought so hard for. When he signed the trade deal, the economy was on fire. His numbers were on fire. This came because of an exogenous event driven by the existential threat to the United States, the Chinese Communist Party. I think when people take it, there's, this turbulence is going to go for a while. And the question is going to be, is the guy that created these jobs, the guy that really set America first national security policy, so we're not in wars all over the place, but we're very focused on what our enemy is, and that enemy is the Chinese Communist Party, and we're in an economic and information war with them right now. I think when people weigh and measure this versus what Joe Biden, remember you said about leadership, Joe Biden was, was really delegated one big thing in the Obama administration, the pivot to Asia. He was Obama's lead man <laughs> on the China. That fiasco was all on Joe Biden's plate. They had yeah. an internal memo. I mean, not only that, Steve, I mean, he, yeah, he was point man on Ukraine. He was point man on the, on the surplus. He was, or the stimulus. He was point man on getting out of Iraq. I mean, everywhere Joe went, disaster followed. And that's what I think you're going to see if he is elected in November, which I don't think, but we have a long way to go. All right, Steve, thank you very much.